Okay, nothing better. Nothing better than a Penn State bye week if you cover Penn State football, especially when the weather's good. I'm Bob Flounders, Johnny McGonigal joining me. It's the Blue White Breakdown, the bye week edition for Penn State football. Johnny, they're 5-0. and they, they got their act together uh, after halftime at Northwestern. They get the bye week this week. Then they get UMass, which is kind of like a second bye week, but I know I shouldn't say that. And then it gets real interesting because they got to make the road trip to Ohio State. So we just heard from all their coordinators. How are you? I know you got Philadelphia fever, and I'm not talking about just the Eagles, the Phillies postseason. It's Tuesday at 3.30 as we record this. The Phillies postseason gets underway in South Philly tonight. So it's got to be quite an eventful Tuesday for you. Bob, it's Red October. You know, got to wear the Schwarberfest. I just saw that. Nice. The, the Wawa Schwarberfest shirt is on. The Phillies yep. hat is on. Uh, it is it is Red October after, you know, the Birds won on, on Sunday. Look, mm-hmm. th- things, things are going well here uh, in Philadelphia. Uh, things went well for your Cowboys over the weekend as well. Um, yeah, so, and my Texas Rangers, and and the tech, yeah, of course. So no, I mean things are going well prof- in, in professional sports for us. Things are going well for Penn State. They're five and zero sitting here uh, on the bye week, and you know as James Franklin and Drew Aller and many many players said after that Northwestern game, they acknowledged that it's a bye week. It's not an off week for them. They've got a lot to improve on. Yeah. Uh, you know, both offensively, more so offensively than defensively, but, um, and, and, you know, it's, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. We spoke to, uh, the coordinators today, uh, today being Tuesday, we're recording, like you said, you know, in the afternoon here, uh, we talked to Mike Yersich, we talked to Manny Diaz, uh, Chuck Losey, even the strength and conditioning coach as well. Um, you know, hopped on a conference call with reporters this afternoon. So plenty to come from that and plenty to, to look yep. ahead at here as we give our deep dive breakdown of UMass football. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just kidding. That's, that's not going to happen. Yeah, like everyone just turned, everyone just stopped listening and watching, <laughs> but I understand. Um, I think, I think the average Penn state fan is probably most looking forward to hearing what Mike Yursich had to say about the offense, I think Penn State fans should feel pretty, pretty good about the defense. But the offense, even though they've had their moments at times this year, a uh, bit of an erratic bunch. Explosive plays are hard to find. Um, and they had a lot of talented skill guys come back. So why don't we start there? I listened to Manny. I know you were on the Manny Diaz call as well. But let's just dig into maybe what you thought were some of the key uh, comments, reactions uh, from Mike Yersich. Yeah, I ended up writing off of off of the Yersich call, and there was a lot to get into. Um, yeah. you, you look at this offense that it, it's interesting because they're averaging, you know, 40 and a half points per game. Uh, they rank among the me- the best nationally, you know, in first downs, in red zone touchdown conversion rate, in fourth down conversions. Um, they're sustaining long scoring drives. They're playing pretty methodical, uh, grinded out football. Uh, and, you know, against Iowa, like that was uh, really sweet for them to do against against the Hawkeyes. Uh, you know, when they've gone on the road against Northwestern and Illinois and started slow and, you know, they put up 30 and 41 points respectively in those games. But mm-hmm. uh, for most of the days, like it, it didn't really feel like that. It didn't feel like it was this kind of 41 point explosion mm-hmm. uh, at Northwestern uh, in particular. And so uh, a lot of the issues there, um, or at least the main issue, the main talking point in this bye week has been the lack of explosive plays uh, from this offense, both passing and running. Uh, you know, there's no, it's no secret. I mean, they, they've got 12 yeah. plays of 20 plus yards so far this season. Uh, that's tied for the second fewest in the FBS. Uh, only Sam Houston State has fewer. Bob, you tell me Iowa has more chunk plays than Penn State? Yes. Oh. Yeah, Penn State is tied right now with Northwestern, NC State, and I believe East Carolina uh, in terms of plays of 20 yards or more. Now, they've had a handful of plays go for like 19 yards, yeah, but, just, but just barely missing out on that threshold. Uh, but only two of those 12 plays have been on the ground. 
Uh, this time last year, Nick Singleton had six of those by himself uh, yeah. through September. So it's just not where they want to be right now. Uh, Drew Aller and the receivers aren't linking up downfield. Those, those plays really haven't even been there. Uh, a part of that is the way that they're playing offense and the way that they're being methodical and everything that I mentioned previously and what we've talked about before. Uh, the running game, it just seems like it's a matter of time before Nick and Catron break those. But it also feels like, Bob, you know, it didn't happen against West Virginia. It didn't really happen against Delaware. And we were talking about before the Illinois game and before, you know, the, this Northwestern game. We're like, oh, th this is the opportunity. This is when it's going to happen. And it just hasn't really happened yet. So, uh, yeah, Mike had some really interesting th things to say. He said, obviously, those things are something that we have to get corrected, spend this bye week. Uh, you know, breaking down self scouting. I feel like the term self scouting was said like <laughs> a million times today. Uh, you know, they're they're looking at the film, they're breaking things down, they're they're trying to make improvements where they can. Um, but it, you know, they're just gonna have to. It's just gonna have to happen for them on the field. As much film as they want to watch, they got to put this stuff into practice. Yeah. So Johnny, my question for you is, and I'll use a. Saying that most Penn State fans, probably not really young Penn State fans, know, but when it applies to Penn State's offense, is it the chicken or the egg? Is is the Penn State passing game not being explosive because the running game is not scaring anyone, anyone or is it vice versa? Is is it because other than Keandre Lambert Smith, including the tight ends, like it's it's just has not been. Uh, a very dangerous passing game. So it's, I guess, I guess we could easily probably uh, get out of it by saying it's both, but from where you have, where you, from your vantage point, when you look at the lack of explosion, uh, where, where are you at with it off, whether it's run game, pass game, what needs to be, what needs, what's the bigger priority? I think it starts with the pass game and you saw initially before they, you know, they, they hit on the 72-yard touchdown to Keandre Lambert-Smith in that West Virginia game. Um, but you saw how West Virginia came out against Penn State, you know, challenging them up front, you know, cover zero blitzes, selling out to stop the run. And I think even though Nick Singleton and Katron Allen haven't broken those runs yet, they're more of a known commodity. You know, just flip on the Rose Bowl tape and see what Nick Singleton can do. Like everyone knows that those long runs are in there somewhere, that that this offense is able to produce those. And so I think defense is more often than not will be more scared of the run game than they are the passing game, especially when they don't have Parker Washington and mm -hmm. they don't have Mitchell Tinsley and these guys who maybe flew under the radar last year in terms of what they brought to the offense. And you know, Parker had that injury, but – um, yeah, I just think that there's an explosion lacking in the passing game, which makes it more difficult on the running game. And if Keandre Lambert Smith has done his job, you know, we saw that in Northwestern, he caught a couple passes and mm -hmm. put them longer, you know, that 35 yard gain he had down the sideline was a really big one. Um, right. but really no one else has stepped up and I, you know, I feel for Harrison Wallace, who, you know, has been, has missed time. And I think that will help this offense once he's back healthy. Uh, but we saw Malik McLean. You know, for example, you know, he had a 20 something yard touchdown catch. I think it was a 25 yard touchdown mm -hmm. catch in the West Virginia game. Right. And four catches for 58 yards. And OK, this is a good building block for the first yeah. transfer. He you know, he had one offensive snap at Northwestern. You know, those two drops at Illinois um, maybe killed the confidence that the staff has in him as a receiver. Uh, Yursich talked a lot about today, you know, just trying to find the right combination at receiver. And uh, he talked a lot about the miscommunications and the and the you know, missed the assignments in terms of routes at Northwestern, saying that it's a big concern uh, and it's something that they have to remedy during the bye week and that, you know, it's, it's just stuff that can't happen. And so I think you can yeah. easily say it's both, but I think it's more so the passing game not doing enough to, you know, alleviate uh, what what seems to be, you know, trouble yeah. in the game. Yeah, and it's uh, – I, I know you do. I hear from Penn State fans, uh, whether it's uh, our tech subscribers, which I hope everyone is – is, is jumping on board with that or just uh, I have friends who are Penn State fans and, you know, the majority of them are not at games. And if you watch the TV, the, the TV look and you watch the game at the stadium, um, you get to see a lot because there's a lot of concern in some people's minds about Drew and Drew, to be fair, Drew, or especially early in the game. He missed some throws that that were there for plays that would have extended drives and maybe could have led to some more early points. And 
That that is also true. But uh, Johnny, I don't know about you. I saw some times where that receiving core hung him out to dry. Um, Dante Cephas uh, did not even look back for a ball at one point. Uh, that all but ruined a drive. He 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 was. I don't know what he was doing. He was twenty yards down the field. I couldn't tell if he was trying to block somebody or what it was. But uh, and and he has just been a guy that shows you flashes, and he's certainly fast. But they just missed on a on what it would have been a forty yard touchdown pass that almost. Almost put uh, Joe Hermit, Penn Labs photographer, in, in, in the hospital for, for multiple days. But Joe survived the hit. He took a couple stitches. He made it back to Chicago with us. But it's just, I, Wallace, part of it is Wallace has not really been involved since the second week. Uh, but part of it is these guys just kind of flash and then they disappear. And really the only guy, the only guy is number one, the tight ends. There's been times I can't tell Johnny if he is missing Theo Johnson or Theo Johnson isn't getting to the spot. There was a play in the end zone that I, it looked like it was open, but I, there was also two defenders right near Theo. So it's it's been really hard to kind of put your finger on one thing when it comes to the passing game and say, well, if they just clean up this, look out. Because I do think – I won't say it's both because I think there's some issues in the run game too. But Johnny, I think they have to get they have to get uh, they have to get Harrison Wallace back on the field. They have to get Katron healthy, uh, Katron Allen healthy. I don't know, uh, I I don't know what it was. Some some guys in the press box were thinking it was upper body related, but they didn't have him for almost for more than half the game. And now they got to get Vega Ion up to speed because he look it looks like he's going to be the left guard for the foreseeable future after J.B. Nelson was carted off. So it's a good time for the bye week, right? But th those guys need to return and be in good health, and Penn State's going to have to figure some things out. I'm just going to throw this to you. I don't really see anything bad about a larger role for Trey Potts. Uh, I know I know that he is the third the third back, at least he was at the start of the year, but – you know, much like much like a guy like Dom DeLuca, whatever he's on the field, he makes something happen. And I think there is a larger role for him in store. I just they have to decide what they want to do with the run game. Yeah, I mean, this is why you went out and got Trey Potts. And yep. it's funny because initially I go back to something that Jaywan Sider said uh, that when Jaywan, you know, when they were talking you know, the Penn, you know, him and the Penn State staff were talking to Trey Potts about transferring from Minnesota uh, to Penn State. Jaywan made it very clear. We have two NFL caliber running backs here, you know, that writing's on the wall of what your role will be, right? Um, but Trey wanted to come anyway, and he wanted to, one, come home because he's a Williamsport guy, yeah. but also, you know, to play on this team and be a part of this season and to contribute in any way he can. And he has provided a spark. I mean, on, offensively, it's a lot of a lot of that spark, a lot of that juice has come from Keandre Lambert Smith. But you know, look at what Trey did at Illinois, coming in and, and you know running that trick play and throwing the touchdown pass to Tyler Warren. Uh, when Katron Allen goes out, you know, one of Trey's first carries went for a 13-yard touchdown, in which you know he got out in space, he bounced, it, he made a guy miss one on one, uh, and then he has that uh, that touchdown catch at the very end. <laughs> I know a lot of Penn State betters were really happy about because it hit the cover yet again. Mm -hmm. uh, Bo Pabula, uh providing for Penn State betters yet again after he you know scored against uh, West Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, but no, like it, Trey, Trey has provided a nice spark. My only thing is that you know when uh, like credit to him and credit to his resilience and his mentality and everything that goes along with that. But it's like if he if he's the guy after five weeks that the fans are saying like oh that you know he surprised me or or he's like providing you know a spark and and, and all that like it, it kind of speaks to where everything else is on offense that you needed the spark at Illinois right. from Trey Potts if that makes sense like um, you know Nick Singleton is frustrated right now you can tell um, you know with where the running game is is he's not happy um, with you know his, his own performance and and the performance as a whole. Uh, he's not having the long runs like he did against Auburn and, and against Ohio and, and in the Rose Bowl. Uh, Katron Allen, 
uh, same deal. And so I think there's there's a real desire in in the room in the Lash building to get this offense clicking. And it's funny, Bob. We you know we just spent almost 15 minutes talking about the offense and how there's so much room to improve. But yeah. when, when at the same time, like you know, they, they are averaging 40 points a game. A lot of that is buoyed by you know yeah. hanging hanging 63 on Delaware, but um, mm-hmm. they are still doing a lot of things well. Uh, they are still chewing the clock and keeping their defense fresh, which mm-hmm. um, not only helps in game, but it helps over the course of a season, especially when you're Penn State, and you want to have a long season. You want to play 15 games this year. Uh, that goes a long way and that helps. But um, so there definitely are positives, but it's also easy to focus on what they can improve and what they can get better at. Um when what they're doing will work definitely against Northwestern and Illinois, uh, it might not against Ohio State. Yeah. yeah, and might and by might not, I would say if it does not improve, I don't know if I would expect it to work. I, one thing, I, just one thing before we go to the defensive side, Johnny. You know, I I, I get that uh, Nicholas is is frustrated. I, I, I it's pretty clear that I think early in the year because James comes out and makes that statement about how much. The whole coaching staff appreciates Katron early. I think he probably was a little frustrated too, right? And then you have Trey Potts, who whatever he he was kind of called upon when he was at Minnesota, um, he had some nice moments there. What I would like to see is if I I would not be I would like to see Penn State kind of go with the hot hand at running back. Maybe after the first you know the first series of the second quarter this. I know we're in the edge of NIL. I know we're in the age of we got to try and keep everyone happy because of the transfer portal. But after three or four possessions, um, I, I don't think it. I don't think it takes a rocket science to figure out who's doing who's doing the lion's share of the damage. And I just think that there's a way to get them all touches. But at some point, you have to you have to go with the guy who's really causing the most problems for the defense. And I wonder if maybe moving forward. They're gonna; those guys will be on a shorter leash if it's just not there and they're pressing or whatever it is. I wouldn't be; I think I would be okay with that, and I think it might actually help them get a little bit more determined and maybe and maybe seize the moment. Right? It's just like you're not you're you're not guaranteed 15 carries a game. Like if it's not there, the other guy's doing better. You know, we're we're getting to, we're getting into crunch time. We need the most reliable, productive players on the field at Ohio State and at home. Uh, in state college, but I, that's my that's just my my two cents, Johnny. Uh, not only have we spent almost eighteen minutes talking about the offense and they've been scoring points anyway, we haven't really talked at all about one of the, one of the most ter- one of the most impressive defenses I think that Penn State's had on the field. You know, you can go back a long way um, between the depth and the athleticism. You can go back a long, long way, and you won't find a defense that's getting the job done like this one. Yeah. And I'll preface everything we're about to say with you. You can only go off of what we've seen and the, the competition that we've seen them go against. Like this is, you know, going against Iowa, Northwestern, Illinois, West Virginia, Delaware, these are not world beater offenses by any means, Mm -hmm. but that also shouldn't take away uh, what this defense has done, you know, through five games, I wrote after my final thoughts column from the Northwestern game was that the, the big picture thought was let's let's don't you know don't forget to appreciate yeah. what we've got here, what Penn State has here, what you're watching as a fan because you know Manny Diaz, the defensive coordinator, probably won't be here much longer. I mean, he has his you know eyes set on being a head coach again one day. Uh, Kalen King is going to be a first round pick most likely. Uh, Chop Robbins could Robinson could be right there with him. Adisa Isaac is an NFL player. Mm-hmm. They've got, you know, an Abdul Carter. I mean, you know, he's a true sophomore. So you got one more season of him at least, but uh, they've got so much NFL talent and, and so, so many guys making plays on this defense that mm-hmm. you know, just appreciate it. And, you know, when, when you're watching a, a team that is taking away the ball as much as they are, um, that is getting after the quarterback, you know, the way that they are. I mean, they're having a lot of fun. You can tell. Um, they sure as hell had a lot of fun in the Iowa game uh, in particular. <laughs> but, you know, they're having fun. You know, if you're a fan, you know, I understand, like the, like we mentioned, the primary focus on what we talked about for so long was the offense and lack of explosive plays and all that. But, um, man, this, this defense is really good. And, and it's good enough. 
that if the offense is, you know, lagging behind a little bit at Ohio State, that they're good enough to, to carry them, you know, to a win there if, if they need to, if mm-hmm. they need to. And so I've been really impressed um, at every level. And the secondary uh, at linebacker, I mean, Dom DeLuca is just making play after play after play. Yeah. Uh, up front, I mentioned the defensive ends, but, you know, Zane Durant is really emerging at defensive tackle. You're providing that in- interior pressure that you want to see. Um and so, yeah, I just think there's a lot to be happy with if you're Manny Diaz, uh, if you're Dion Barnes, Anthony Poindexter, Terry Smith. Uh, and, and you know, I, I don't see – I really don't see a major weakness in this defense other than maybe, you know, some missed tackles here and there because that was a problem at Northwestern for yeah. a hot minute. But, mm-hmm. I mean, you really have to nitpick. There's not an obvious, like, oh, explosive plays. There's, it's not like the offense where – you know, the problem is hitting you in the face repeatedly. Um, you really have to look for something to complain about on this defense. Yeah, 12 tackles for loss, seven sacks against Northwestern. And I just listening to, to Manny talk, um, by the way, just for Penn State fans, because they don't really get to ever hear Manny, whether it's, you know, at the podium after, you know, on media day or on a Zoom call. But he's impressive, Johnny. He is impressive with the way – he fields questions, the big picture thoughts, how he expresses himself. Um, you know, not a, you ask him a question and he, he goes into great detail about, you know, what, why, it's, why things are working, what needs to get better. Um, I'm really impressed to hear him uh, just, just kind of see the field, right? He sees everything and you ask him a question and he gives you about as thorough an answer as I could ever recall a Penn State assistant ever giving uh, very informative, and you never kn- quite know what he's going to say. But I- I'm always like, after I hear him talk, I'm like, man, that really makes a lot of sense. And that actually, I didn't really think about it that way. But yeah, man, he like you, 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 you know what you're doing. Uh, he is definitely not going to be in state college much longer. He knows how to. He knows what the name of the game is about on defense anymore. It's about getting key third down stops, uh, spots, stops, getting uh, disruptive plays. And, and and when you have a chance to get a turnover, you, you know, you do the most with it. And I think he, he does get it. I think he can recruit. He knows how to coordinate a defense. I would just say this about Manny. I thought he I thought he mentioned some things. You know, what what what's really got this defense to, to raise its level this year? It's no surprise that Disa Isaac and Chop Robinson are playing great. I think Curtis Jacobs can actually play better. He referenced some missed tackles. I think I think he, he can tighten things up a little bit, but he's clearly uh, a game-changing talent um, on special teams and outside at linebacker. Kalen King and Johnny Dixon have been just terrific. I think Kevin Winston at safety has been a big reason why <clears throat> this defense has really taken a step. But I would mention two more players. You mentioned Zane Durant, who who uh, who Manny talked about inside. Whether It's not just the fact <clears> – <throat> that he's strong. It's that he's explosive and that's the short area quickness, which knocked that quarterback out. They didn't even touch him and get Kobe King in the middle. I think Manny talked about, you know, the talent was always there, but he expects a lot of the guys, a lot of the guy that's kind of calling the signals and getting the defense lined up. Right. You don't, you rarely see them misaligned like against, against uh, Delaware when they gave up that long run. I don't know that they were misaligned. I just think that was a bad fit by somebody on that play. Um, those are all good signs, but the depth, Johnny, is, is just really impressive. And invariably, you can go through the, the the win streak, which dates back to the last five games of last year. I think, Johnny, in every game, you've seen this defense just get better and better as the game has progressed. I mean, I think they have given up 17 points in the second half this year. And, yeah, they have not played fearsome offenses, but West Virginia can do some things, man. And they scored in garbage time in the second half or they would have been shut out. You know, Illinois had some moments, but then they turned the ball over and even Northwestern had put up some nice passing yards. I know it was against Minnesota, but I mean, they squelched them pretty good too. I just think this defense is, is it's, I don't think when, when Minnesota, uh, when Michigan comes calling at Beaver stadium, I'd be really stunned if the game looked anything at all, like, what that running game did to Penn State last year. They've always played them tough at home. I'm excited about this defense. I really want I, – I think that the offense really has to find another gear because it would be a shame to waste a defense like this. 
It would. It would. And, you know, Penn State's defense has to stay impressive. Like you mentioned, the Michigan game upcoming. They've got Ohio State in Columbus at the shoe. Uh, I actually asked Manny about this. <laughs> that was and, a good answer, too. And I loved it. It was, it was a response from a former head coach. Like, he, he just gets yeah. it. And, and, you know, you can tell that, that he's done this a, a time or two. But, uh, you know, we, we don't know if we're going to be able to speak to Manny before yeah. the Ohio State game. Uh, we only get, you know, an assistant coach a week. And after we talk to him today, like, who knows if we get him UMass week or Ohio State week. So I asked him, hey, you know, this bye week is always used for, you know, preparing for future opponents as well as all the internal stuff that you want to get done. You know, any early thoughts on what you've seen from Ohio State? And he goes on this long answer about, yeah, it's very common for us to, look, you know, go ahead, look to other opponents and prepare analysts, all that. And he said, my, on the Buckeyes, he said, my opinions are absolutely very strong and they're absolutely going to stay to myself, Yeah, uh, which I respect, understand, totally fair. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I think, I think they're going to have a really good shot in that game primarily because of the defense um, because we haven't seen you know, the explosive plays from Penn state, they're doing the job in terms of managing the game. Well, and all that, like that's been, that's been nice to see. Uh, but I really think this defense matches up well against what Ohio state does and what they want to do. Um, and so they just gotta, they gotta stay healthy first and foremost. Like they can't afford a big injury mm -hmm. um, in the secondary or up front, uh, but they gotta keep playing, you know, with their hair on fire and keep playing, you know, with this, the, with the mentality, the, the disruptive mentality, that Manny Diaz has instilled in these guys to play free and to play fun and to attack um, because that's how you're going to go into Columbus and put up a performance, the, the type of performance yeah. that you want to see. Yeah. One last thing for me, Johnny, for you, I don't see if you agree with me. I don't, th I think it's fair to say this about Penn state special teams. Um, I think that there, there are still some concerns there. I don't know that they're major, but I would say, I would say this, I think, I think Falcons, Alex Falcons, when he hit, that was a pretty big kick. He hit 47 yards when the game was it still mattered at Northwestern. I think I think they got the right guy there. I think the punter is good. My my thing is this, you know, in in the Iowa game, Caden Saunders uh, dropped a punt, um, and it could have been a bit. I think it was 10 nothing at the time. It could have been a big deal. He jumped on it, but that would have given Iowa the ball. I think pretty deep in Penn State territory. And I don't think it was going to – I think Penn State was still going to win the game, but it would have given Iowa life, right? And then, you know, Nick Singleton uh, on the opening kick against Northwestern loses the ball at the 11. Penn State's defense has to make a great stand. They actually pushed him back uh, to settle for a short field goal. They have to be better in the return game. <laughs> and I just, I just you know, I, I, hope that, I hope that the field goal kicker can continue, whoever it is, can continue to make – the kicks from 45 yards and in, especially when you mention Ohio State and Michigan. And if I was on the Stacey Collins call, I might have asked him about the, the delay of game on the kickoff. But I just feel like that's just that's just that would just be mean because I don't think there was really any. I just didn't think they knew that the, the play clock had started. But I do think, though, if you're a Penn State fan, they do need to clean some things up uh, in the return game specifically for the rest of the season. Yeah, definitely the return game. You mentioned punting uh, Riley Thompson. I think he's done an okay job, but yeah. there have been a couple punts where you're like, "Whoa, whoa!" Like, you know, what was that? Like, you know, <laughs> he's 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 not Jordan Stout. I mean, if you guys are Jordan Stout, yeah. is doing it at a high level uh, with the Ravens right now. Um, but you know, I, I think that, so. I think there's room for improvement there. Uh, you know, whether it's return, whether it's punt. Uh, one guy, you know, we didn't mention on special teams, Gabriel and Wosu. I think yeah. it's a stellar job on kickoff. It's such a thankless job, uh, but he's been getting a lot of touchbacks. I don't think he's had uh, a penalty yet for kicking it out of bounds. I don't want to jinx him. I'm not going <laughs> to look right now for Gabe. I, I don't want to screw that up for him, but uh, I think he's done a pretty good job. And Falcons, that 47-yarder, I'm sure is big for his confidence. Yeah. He's missed a couple kicks, but – um, you know, considering where the field goal situation was yeah. you know, against, you know, West Virginia when Sander misses those two, uh, you know, it was looking pretty doom and gloom at that point. But I think Falcons has kind of righted, you know, righted the ship there. Uh, and yeah, until something goes wrong, you know, not, you know you, 
I, I think you just chalk it up and say, okay, like, you know, he's doing a fine job. So um, not too many complaints there on special teams, just a few things to clean up. That's what the bye week is for, Bob. They got to clean some things up. You know, we got to clean some things up. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a good time for self scouting. <laughs> Yeah, and somebody, somebody, it's not me, somebody on this podcast needs to get to the great state of Texas to uh, experience the Texas OU game. I can't uh, wait. I'm, I'm, I, sure, I can't, I can't I'm sure that is a, uh, I don't know if that's a bucket list for you, but it's probably got to be very, a very t- at the top of the list to get to get loose on the bye week and have time to go down there and do that. I think you have family down there, which makes it easier. I think yeah. it's a win-win because you get to see some family as well, but. I think that's uh, that's great for you. So, Penn State fans, we're gonna we're gonna leave you with uh, with our th- those are our thoughts on the bye week. I think there'll be a couple more podcasts later this week with some other of uh, the gentlemen that are covering uh, Penn State football. But Johnny, good luck. One, 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 one quick thing, Bob. So yep. If if any listener by chance has ever gone to the Texas Oklahoma game, Woo! and if they have any suggestions for the state fair, any food any beer, any, just any kind of suggestions throw my way. Deep, I think they deep fry everything. And I, I do, I knew, I think deep fried Oreos might be on your, on your list. I'm definitely getting one of those. <laughs> I, I just have to, uh, I think I'm contractually obligated to get one of those. They Don't make, come back Johnny without it. Don't they come make, back. They make fried beer, Bob. <laughs> I think I might I have to bring that back for you. also a thing down there as well. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it though. And, um, and yep. we'll, we'll, we'll still have the, I'll still have the AP ballot up on Sunday morning. Um, and so mm-hmm. still a lot of good coverage from us the rest of the week uh, before, before we switch back into game week mode uh, for UMass. All right. We'll see you guys. We'll see you guys soon.